Today we're going to be working on negative exponents day number three. Our content objective is students will be able to simplify expressions with exponents that are negative. Language objective is students will be able to discuss patterns associated with negative exponents and why am I learning this? Well, it's important for real world problems like representing the size of something very small, such as the diameter of a white blood cell. So first, let's go over some background knowledge. Okay, uh, when writing an exponential form using positive exponents, what we do first is recognize here, we always start with the number one. Since it's a negative exponent, we're going to divide by four, a total of four times. Okay, now another way of looking at it is this. It's one times four to the negative fourth, which is essentially, one times one over four to the fourth, which then translates to one over one times one over four to the fourth. And we can simplify that one step further and say that's basically one over four to the fourth. Now, why did I do all of that to show you what was basically the same as this? Because what if we multiply something other than 1, okay? What if we multiply by 3? Then it's going to be the same idea. We're going to take 3 and multiply by 1 over 4 to the 4th, which is the same as 3 over 1 times 1 over 4 to the 4th, which is going to give me 3 over 4 to the 4th. And so from there, we understand that 4 to the negative 4th is just 1 over 4 to the 4th, which means 1 times 4 to the negative 4th is just 1 over 4 to the 4th. Now, I want you to keep an eye on the blue 1 and see where it's located. Now, what if I multiplied by 2 times 4 to the negative 4th? Then my answer would be 2 over 4 to the 4th. And again, keep an eye on the blue numbers and see if you are recognizing a pattern, okay, 3 times 4 to the negative 4th is 3 over 4 to the 4th. 4 times 4 to the negative 4th is 4 over 4 to the 4th. And 5 times 4 to the negative 4th is 5 over 4 to the 4th. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern of how that extra number right here, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, is playing into the actual answer. Let's try it with another case. How about 7 to the negative fourth? It's 1 over 7 to the fourth. So 7 to the negative fourth times 1 is going to be 1 over 7 to the fourth. Now the only difference from this one from the previous one is now instead of the one being in front, it's behind. But notice with multiplication there's a commutative property so it really doesn't matter where it's placed, my answer is still going to remain the same as before. So here, 7 to the negative 4th times 2 is 2 over 7 to the 4th. 7 to the negative 4th times 3 is 3 over 7 to the 4th. 7, oh, 7 to the negative 4th times 4 is 4 over 7 to the 4th. And 7 to the negative 4th times 5 is 5 over 7 to the 4th. So again, take a good look at where those blue numbers are coming into play with the actual answer. So at this point, I would like you to go ahead and pause the video and try numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 on your own using the pattern that you recognized from the previous two slides. Okay, so let's see how well we did. For number one, the answer is 5 over 3 squared. Number two, the answer is 9 over 2 to the eighth. Number three is 7 over 5 cubed. And number four is 6 over 7 to the seventh power. So we are going to go over um, more in detail of how these are the way that they are, other than just recognizing that pattern. Okay, so let's take a look at number five. 5 times 6 to the negative second power. First, I understand that's basically 5 over 6 to the squared. And I can write that out as 5 over 6 times 6, which is just 5 over 36. Now, if you're wondering, why am I dividing by 6 squared? Because if you notice here, it is a negative exponent, which requires me to divide. OK. 
Okay. Number six, three to the negative third times eight is going to be eight over three cubed, which is eight over three times three times three, which is eight over 27. And again, if you're wondering why three cubed is underneath, because we are doing repeated division here. Okay. And number seven, two times four to the negative fourth is two over four to the fourth. I'm going to write them out as two over four times four times four times four. Now here, whenever you can, you want to make sure you can um, reduce whenever possible. Here I can reduce the numerator and denominator by two. So two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. I can't reduce any further, so my answer is going to be 1 over 128. If you're wondering how I got that, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 8 times 4 times 4 is 16, and that would give me my 128. Okay, so now at this point, I would like you to go ahead and pause the video and try your best to try number 8, 9, and 10 by yourself. Okay, so let's see how well we did. Hopefully from number 8, you rewrote it as 9 over 3 to the 5th. You expanded it out, and you got 9 over, whoops, just kidding, backtrack. Here, you can actually reduce both the numerator and denominator by 3. So whenever possible, definitely do that, because if you don't, your final answer is most likely not going to be reduced, which therefore would be wrong. So here you can divide both the numerator and denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. But notice I can, uh, once again, reduce a 3 and a 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So now I'm just left over with 1 in the numerator and 3 threes in the denominator, which multiplies to 1 over 27. Okay. I like to circle the numbers that I have left because it helps me recognize that that is what's left over. If I don't, sometimes I end up losing one of the numbers. So just a quick tip, do that to help you remind yourself this is what I have left over. Number nine, hopefully you rewrote 16 times four to negative third as 16 over four cubed. We're gonna go ahead and extend this out as 16 over four times four times four. Hopefully you recognize you can um, reduce both the numerator and denominator by four. Four divided by four is one. 16 divided by four is four. Once again, you can reduce once more. You can reduce by a four. Four divided by four is one, and four divided by four is one. So now what I have left over is essentially a one in the numerator and a four in the denominator. So it's one fourth. So that's just my answer. Okay, so number 10. Here it's the opposite of negative nine to the zero power. Hopefully you know that's just a fancy way of saying negative one over, in this case, um, it's gonna be pos over two to the negative, sorry, negative one over two cubed. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out. You have negative one over two times two times two, which is going to be negative one eighth. Okay, so check out, see how well you did. If you got something wrong, please take a very close look and what your mistake is, and make sure you make that correction. Okay, so now, another way to solve this problem. This is more of the why, okay? First, I want you to recognize that this is four to the first power, so I'm gonna write that as four over one. The reason why I'm writing as a fraction is so that when I multiply it by another fraction, it makes it easier to see what's a numerator and what's a denominator. Here, the exponent is a negative three, so I'm gonna do repeated division. So I start with the one and divide by four three times. So this becomes, let's see, reduce this, and I'm left with one as my numerator, and I have two fours in the denominator, so I would write that as one over four squared, which can be reduced to one over 16. So this is the why. This is why what we've been using as a pattern, um, why it makes sense. Okay, so notice I gave two answers. One, in exponential form, and another, evaluated. Please make sure you understand the difference. I still have some students wondering why their answer is wrong. Chances are it's because 
they were asking you to leave an exponential form and you went ahead and evaluated. So be very careful and make sure you read instructions. Okay, now, what if both terms are exponents? What do we do? Sorry, what if both terms have exponents? What do we do? Well, it actually is pretty very, uh, it's pretty similar here. Three squared would just be three times three over one. 3 to negative 3rd would just be 1 over 3 times 3 times 3, which is going to leave me with, well, I can go ahead and divide. 3 by 3 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and keep doing this until I have no more 3's to cancel out, leaving me with a 1 in the denominator and a 3, sorry, 1 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator. Now, here you see it's 1 over 3 to the first power. Is it really necessary to write to the first power? Absolutely not. This is sufficient. Okay. Awesome. So it says here, write each expression in exponential form and evaluate. So they're asking me to do both. So here, number 11, 2 to the 4th times 2 to the negative 2nd. First, I'm going to do 2 to the 4th, which is just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 1. And again, the reason why I'm doing that is because if I have to multiply by something like this, which you will see in a second, it makes it easier for me to see what's a numerator and what's the denominator. 2 to negative second would be 1 over 2 times 2. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the 2's as many as I can, which leaves me with 2 squared over 1, which is just 2 squared. So this would be my exponential answer, but evaluated, the answer would be 4. Okay, so another one, number 12. 3 to negative second, I'm going to re rewrite that as 1 over 3 times 3. Because it's a negative exponent, that's why I'm dividing by 3. Now 3 to negative third, that's going to be 1 over 3 times 3 times 3. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over, let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to write it as 1 over 3 to the fifth. So there's my exponential answer. But um, evaluated, I'm going to multiply 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 5 times, and that's going to give me 243. So again, I expect you to show both an exponential answer and an evaluated answer. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and pause the video and try numbers 13 and 14 on your own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. For number 13, 9 to negative second would be 1 over 9 times 9. You're doing repeated division. Uh, times 9 squared would just be 9 times 9 over 1. Notice you can reduce numerator and denominators by 9s, which leaves you with 1. So here, because you're asked to write in exponential form, you should ask yourself, how many 9s do we have in the numerator? Zero. How many do we have in the denominator? Zero. So I would actually write my answer as 9 to the 0 power. And this is what you're going to be expected to do on your homework as well. Now 9 to the 0 power is 1. So here again is my answer in exponential form, and here's my answer evaluated. Number 14, let's check out what we did. 5 to the negative 4th is 1 over 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. We're dividing since it's a negative exponent. And 5 cubed would be 5 times 5 times 5 over 1. And again, putting it over 1 just makes it easier for me when I need to reduce. I can go ahead and reduce the numerator and denominator by 5s. I do as many as I can, can until I can't anymore. So here I'm left with a 1 in the numerator and I have 1 5 in the denominator. So again, is it really necessary for me to include this one? No, but is it wrong to? Absolutely not. But this would be my answer in exponential form, and it would also be my answer in, in, um, evaluated as well. Okay, so hopefully you got those ones right. So let's just go ahead and keep moving on. It says here, write each expression in exponential form and evaluate, so the same instructions. I'm going to go ahead and give you one, and I'm going to have you pause the video and try the next one on your own. So here we have a negative 4 squared. Since it's a positive exponent, I'm going to do repeated multiplication. And again, putting it over 1 just makes it easier for me when I start multiplying at the end. 
Here we have um, negative 4 to the negative 5th, so I'm going to do repeated division. So I'm going to do 1 over negative 4 repeated 5 times. I'm going to go ahead and reduce as many as I can. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. Keep repeating that until I have nothing left. So now, what am I left in the numerator? I'm left with a 1. And how many negative 4s am I left with? Well, I'm left with 3. So that's going to be 1 over negative 4 cubed. Please, I can't stress enough, make sure you have those um, parentheses around the negative because without them, it can really change the way that you would read it. So there's my exponential answer, but I also need to evaluate it. So it's going to be 1 over um, negative 64, which is the same as negative 1 over 64. Now, some of my students are being a little careless with the negative, so you want to make sure you're, if you need to write it out, extend it completely as you have here. A negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. Okay. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video and try number 16 on your own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. Here we have a negative exponent, so we're going to do division. It's going to be 1 over negative 2. Here we have a negative exponent, so we're also going to do division. So it's going to be multiplied by 1 over negative 2 times negative 2. Now you'll see here there's nothing I can cross cancel that can happen. So we're going to be left over with 1 over negative 2 cubed. Now that would be my exponential answer, but to evaluate I'm going to go ahead and multiply it out. Use this if you need. A negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. So my answer is going to be a negative 1 eighth. So again, you need your exponential answer and evaluated answer. Okay, same idea. I'm going to go ahead and give you one example and have you pause and try number 18 on your own when you're ready. Okay, so for number 17 here, we have a negative exponent. So I'm going to do repeated division. So I'm going to have 1 over negative 8 repeated 3 times. Now here we have a positive exponent, so I'm going to do repeated multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, multiply negative 8 three times. Again, since I have some of the numerator and denominator, I can reduce by negative 8, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1. I keep doing this until I have nothing left over. So now, ask yourself, because I won exponential form, how many negative 8s do you have in the numerator or in denominator? You have absolutely none. So you would write negative 8 to the 0 power. That would, you be, that would be your exponential form. Now to evaluate what is anything raised to the 0 power, the answer is just 1. Even negative 8 to the 0 power is just 1. Okay, so now pause the video and try number 18 on your own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. Number 18 is just, uh, it's just pushing the envelope a little bit more because there's three terms instead of two this time. So let's see how well you did. Number 18, we have a negative exponent here, so I'm going to do repeated division. 1 over 8 times 8 times 8. Now here, 8 to the 6th power, it's a positive exponent, so I'm going to do repeated multiplication. 8 repeated 6 times. And then here we have 8 to negative 1st, so that's going to be repeated division, but just only once. Here I do have 8 in the numerator and the denominator, so I can go ahead and reduce as many as I can. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 8 divided by 8 is 1. Keep going until you cannot anymore. Okay, so now I'm left with how many 8's in the numerator? I have two 8's in the numerator, which is 8 squared. I have absolutely no more in the denominator, so my exponential form would just be 8 squared. And 8 squared is 64. That would be my evaluated answer. So hopefully, you were able to get number 18 right, even though it was just a little bit more harder. Not that much. Okay, so moving on. Number 19. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do number 19, and then I'll have you pause the video and try number 20 on your own. So there's nothing different, really. You're going to do the same exact steps. Here we have a positive exponent, so we're going to do repeated multiplication. Make sure you keep those um, negative 2s. Okay, it's a negative 2. Now here it is a negative 1, so I'm going to do repeated division. So I'm going to do times 1 over negative 2. Going to continue. We have a negative 4, so that's going to be 1 over negative 7 repeated 4 times. And then here we have a positive exponent, so that's going to be negative 7 repeated multiplication. 
Now, here, what do you want to do? Hopefully you recognize all I need to do is reduce whatever I can. Here I do have one negative two I can reduce from the numerator and denominator, leaving me with one. Now here I can reduce um, the negative sevens, about two of them, from the numerator and denominator, like so. Now here, again, it helps me to circle to see how much I have left. I have um, negative two cubed in the numerator, and then I have a negative seven squared in the denominator, which would be written like this. This, of course, would be my exponential form, and then I have to go ahead and evaluate it. Negative two cubed is negative eight, and negative seven squared is a positive 49, so my answer is gonna be a negative eight over 49. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try number 20 on our own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. Hopefully you just went ahead and wrote everything out. You reduced whatever you could as much as you can. And that would have left you with, let's see, we're just left with a 1 in the numerator. And we're left with 1, negative 3. And then uh, 2, 7. So I would write that as 1 over negative 3 times 7 squared. That would be my exponential answer. But then evaluating it would be a 1 over negative 147. So simply multiplying 49 times a negative 3, and that's what give you your answer. Okay, so that actually concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, as, and as always, until next time, bye.